all of this. But members of the peaceful, uh, members of the Indian community they say there will be no settlement if they lose the millions of dollars in revenues because the appeals court, of course, has said that they want that tax paid by non-Indian people who shop on the reservation. The 14 people arrested last night were arraigned in the town of Brant. The judge set bail at $100 or $5,000 if it's not paid by tonight. A group of people from the reservation were on this bridge last night. Police say some were throwing debris onto the interstate. And although no shots were fired, witnesses say the fireworks sounded like gunfire. And then as soon as that happened, they just went berserk. They started hitting everybody. Girls, we had, we had girls with us. You little, you know, not you little girls, but small girls. They were being hit with clubs and stuff. This morning, some people returned to the Mile Strip Bridge where there had been more activity last night. And state police gathered in force, vowing to keep the throughway open. And as I mentioned, it is quiet tension here right now, but there could be more activity. And Eyewitness News reporter Gene Hill is here. And Gene, you've been looking into why this is such a hot issue here. That's right. Steve, Susan, and I just spoke with the treasurer of the Seneca Nation, and he says, he predicts that there will be a massive ripple effect throughout the nation if the proposed New York State tax is enforced. He says that not only does a lot of programs depend, a lot of programs depend on the money and the profits that they get from gasoline and, and uh, cigarettes, but there are a lot of programs that the children depend on, Head Start, education, health care programs, housing programs. All of those programs depend on the profits that come from the sale of cigarettes and uh, gasoline. He also made a point that uh, the general fund budget was just passed at $6.2 million. Of that money, $1.2 and one to $1.3 million come directly from the sales of gasoline and cigarettes. He also pointed out that the members of the Seneca Nation spend about 95% of their money in the state of New York. York, and they and they make uh, uh, pay taxes on what they buy in the state of New York. Right now, the tribal council is meeting to try to come up with some kind of proposal as to how to solve this problem peacefully. Do you think New York State should be able to charge a sales tax for non-Native Americans buying goods on the reservation? If you take a walk with me, you'll see uh, some of the signs that are being put up here. This one says, Mario, enough is enough, as people uh, putting that up here uh, on the reservation. The debate here is whether whether the throughway should be closed. The members of the Seneca Indian Reservation say that yes, it should. They say that New York State has breached their treaty, their contract with the Indian Reservation, and they say that the easements that they gave New York State to build this throughway will also be breached. That's right, Keith. The major development, really, the tribal nation has met in Salamanca. They have come out with a statement saying that there is an ultimatum. They want state police off their land. They want them to begin leaving by 6 o'clock tonight. They say they have until 6 p.m. tomorrow. And if they don't move out, the Indian tribes say they will move them out. This focus all changed today on several fronts. First, the state police gathered here in very large numbers, at least 60 cars here, and many more reported by some people. The state police presence a clear indication that they intend to keep the throughway open. And there was also uh, several other problems that happened overnight, but the concern now is what will happen tonight, and some police officers especially concerned about what will happen on Friday night, which is a night where there is generally more activity outside. Tribal members of the Seneca Indian Nation chanted in unity after a marathon meeting in Salamanca. When the meeting was over, J.C. Seneca told reporters it's time for the state police to leave. For them to uh, vacate our territory by 6 p.m. tonight. They do not. Within 24 hours of uh, this, which would make it Friday evening at 6 p.m., the Seneca Nation has no option but to take back the territory that is located on the New York State Thruway, Route 17 over here, and the city of Salamanca. Seneca says they will not use guns. Rather, they will use their fire companies, and he says he will deputize more than 200 members of the reservation. A tribal leader of an anti-tax group, Larry Bala, says he's taking his own approach. I'll take water. But I'm going to take no food or any other nourishment until the state of New York either stays their court decision or Governor Cuomo announces that they are going to honor the treaties their forefathers signed. After the meeting, the tribal members marched to Route 17 to try to take control of the road there and begin the next chapter of a story, which for the tribe is more than 150 years old. At Cattaraugus County's Indian Reservation, Steve Boyd, Eyewitness News.
looking at a picture right now, which is just several hundred yards behind me. We're here at Route 438 and the overpass of the thruway, the I-90. This is where all the trouble started last night, where they were burning tires, where some debris was being thrown onto the uh, highway. We've got about a dozen state troopers here, and every overpass for several miles on either side of this overpass, up and down the thruway, there are also state troopers, 25, 30 cars I saw this afternoon at least. Now, all of this began just around dinner time or just after dinner time last night. Eyewitness News reporter Lisa Flynn has more on that for us. The protest began calmly as dozens of members of the Seneca Nation gathered along the thruway near the Route 438 overpass, which runs through Seneca land. Tires were set on fire. Troopers stood watch. And then the trouble started. I got it. Troopers and Native Americans scuffled over the location of the protesters and the rights of the troopers on Seneca land. By the hundreds, Seneca Indians and their supporters turned this strip of Route 17 into a campground and perhaps a battleground. I have a son out here. He's 18 years old. And I have a 15-year-old daughter here with me. So you're, you're here to stay? Yes, I am. The highway runs through the Seneca's Allegheny Reservation. Armed with clubs, they've taken control of this section of it over taxes. So far upheld in the courts, a new state law placing sales tax on cigarettes and gasoline sold at Indian businesses to non-Indians. But the big picture is, is of another sovereign nation, New York, imposing its laws and its regulations and its rules on another sovereign nation, our nation, and Indian nations in New York. And that's, that's, the, that's the main point. Tonight, the Senecas did hear from the New York state government, a visit from Lee Hunt of the newly created State Office of Indian Relations. His offer, if the Senecas went home, the troopers down the road would leave, and talks would begin tomorrow. The offer was soundly rejected. I don't know you. This is my first time ever seeing you. You expect me to trust you? I don't think so. I'll wait till Governor Cuomo talks to our president. Yeah. When, oh. our, when our president tells us that Governor Cuomo talked to him, then we'll go. Not only do the Senecas want to hear from the governor, but what he has to say about the tax issue may determine how long the Senecas will stay here and how peaceful the protests will remain. It was a night of intimidation on the Cattaraugus Indian Reservation. On one side, state troopers wearing bulletproof vests and carrying nightsticks. On the other, mostly young Senecas calling for the troopers to get off their land. I think if the state boys don't rule up, we can get off. A bunch of stuff's just going to go down. It's going to be another Aquasusney, I believe. State police massed hundreds of troopers at the Fredonia State Campus. They slowed down traffic at the Cataraugus Creek Bridge and blocked off the Route 438 Thruway overpass. Earlier today, the leaders of the five nations of the Iroquois Confederation met in Salamanca, calling for a meeting with Governor Cuomo and setting a 6 p.m. Friday deadline for all state authorities to leave the reservation. the training exercise the Seneca Nation warriors say will help them if confronted by state police. Nation leaders met with a representative from the state's Office of Indian Affairs, but they didn't want to hear it from him. They wanted their message to go straight to the governor. I don't think anybody here wants to see what happened a repeat of last night. Is that a threat? Is that a threat? Get off our land, Lee. Get off. We don't want to hear no more. Cuomo can talk to our, our president right away, then this will, will settle down. Not until then. We're ready. The state government. rep promised to get the Seneca Nation's message to the governor. While these warriors reinforce their message, they want action right away. Our team coverage continues with Lisa Flynn. It was a battle of wills tonight on the Cattaraugus Indian Reservation. State police maintain control of two bridges, one on Route 438, the other on Mile Strip Road. For their part, Native Americans gathered forces at the Seneca Service Mart, ready to move in and try to take control of the bridges. We want them out of here. We don't need them here. This is our land. That seemed to be the feeling of most gathered here tonight. Frustration ran high even among the younger kids in the crowd. Me and my family, my brother and my mom, my dad were all frustrated why, why, why um, state troopers are um, doing this. They're supposed to be nice people and they're over beating people. Just remain calm and just wait patiently. 
Monica Nation police officers tried to calm tempers, urging the crowd not to storm the bridges until an order arrives from Seneca leaders, who earlier in the day drafted a resolution ordering the state police off the reservation. We're trying to keep people from going over there because tensions are high on both sides. We don't want any mistakes by anybody at this time because an agreement has been made and we're just waiting for the paperwork and our executives to serve that paper. Tempers are calm here on the reservation tonight, but Seneca members tell us if diplomatic channels fail to get state police off of the reservation, they'll take matters back into their own hands. Well, we asked for your opinion tonight on whether New York State should be able to charge a sales tax for non-Native Americans buying goods on Indian reservations. Most of you responding agree that at least in principle you do agree with the Native American leaders. The result 20% of you thought that New York State should be allowed to collect those taxes, but 80% say no. Our thanks to all of those who took part in tonight's unscientific 7 survey. Here, uh, just near Route 17, where it has been blocked by members of the Seneca Nations of Indians, I'm here with Dennis Bowen, who is a spokesman uh, for the group here. Dennis, can you just uh, describe for us what the current situation is here and then, and then behind us down the road a little bit? In our discussions with the New York State Police last night, uh, we, we continued to block the whole road, and uh, we're going to see how it goes today. Now, you have, uh, I'm looking at maybe 40 to 60 people here. How many people do you have down the road? We had about 500 people last night, and uh, now with the second alarm going off, people from the community are still coming out, coming back out. Dennis, where is the situation going to head at 6 o'clock tonight when, when the ultimatum meets its ultimate deadline? We're here as servants of the Seneca Nation, as helpers, and um, the, the main point now is we need to hear from Cuomo, uh, Mario Cuomo. And the issue of, uh, of taxation here on the reservation, your view on this issue about why uh, the members of the Seneca Nation should be able uh, to be tax-free when they sell items to, to non-Indian people. The issue of taxation, while it is uh, a very crucial and sensitive issue, is a symptom. And we have spent 200 years trying to deal with symptoms and not the condition. The condition has to do with the law, sovereignty, the treaties. And as Cuomo said last night, the law is the law. We agree with it. The law is the law, and we want to deal with conditions, not symptoms. And so, yes, taxation is included in that, but there are other issues, including sovereignty. Dennis, I guess the question that a lot of people are wanting to ask this morning is, will there be violence if the state police are not gone at 6 o'clock tonight? The, there were two state police that were out. There were the state police here with Captain Edward Haig, who are marvelous professional people. And it was the professional training of Captain Haig and his men that prevented violence. We had the same thing happen here the earlier on the two previous nights. There could have been violence, but Captain Haig and us, we worked it out there, there's another group of New York State Police, and that's the violence. Their leadership problem up there uh, came out in the violence from the state police. And so the only violent group so far are the state police up there, not the state police here. Dennis Bowen, thank you very much for joining us. And Ann, I should tell you that when we came up here this morning, this is a very heavily secured area. Uh, we were greeted by uh, what I could only describe as a very group of, a group of very angry people. We explained that we were journalists, third party observers of this situation and then we were able to, to set up uh, our live shot and, and our uh, situation with about five or six vehicles that we have here. But they really are not letting anyone through Route 17. They're extremely serious about it. Reporting live from Salamanca, Steve Boyd, Eyewitness News. Thanks very much, Steve. And of course, Steve...